Hello everyone and welcome along to Inside Dakar. Today is a very special day because today is the launch of the brand new Audi RSQ e-tron E2. We are in the heart of Audi Sport, just on the outskirts of the main circuit and joining me in person, which is fantastic. It's more than a year since last time, Stefan Moser. How have you been? You've been on this incredible adventure with the Dakar Rally and also the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. What has it all been like? I missed you the last year <laughs> and I'd like to say welcome to the desert of Audi because we are in the heart of the Audi Motorsport area here in Neuburg. And it's a great pleasure for me to stay beside you for the first time after one year. <laughs> Now, in the next 25, 30 minutes, we are going to show you a lot of things. We have all the drivers, all the co-drivers with us today. And of course, I would say the main star of the show is the brand new Audi RSQ e-tron E2. You know, Stefan, this is where you work every single day. What, what has not, this period been like? <laughs> <laughs> not me. It's the, the work of our engineers, of our mechanics and everybody else. But they had worked hard, believe me, even through the last night, because I have to finish the car uh, up to the very last moment. And I'm happy to see the car later on here on the track. We've created a Dakar camp here. We have some guests with us today and creating the perfect atmosphere to show off this brand new car. But uh, before we introduce you to the new car, let's have a look back at uh, what the previous Audi RSQ e-tron got up to. It was the perfect start to a new era in the long history of Audi Sport. After just 12 months of preparation, the team took on the adventure of the Dakar Rally with a vehicle full of innovations, the Audi RSQ e-tron. The electrically powered desert ship impressed immediately, mastering 24,000 kilometers of desert heat and sand. Four stage victories and all three Audi RSQ e-tron vehicles crossed the finish line. This exceeded even the wildest of expectations. And as we all know, after the freestyle comes the show. At the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge, Audi makes history with technical innovations. For the first time, a vehicle with an alternative drive concept wins an off-road rally. The huge smiles on the premier winners, Stefan Peter Hansel and Edward Bollinger, herald in a successful era for Audi in the field of electric mobility. Well, it certainly has been a huge success so far, Stefan. And we're going to bring in our first very special guest. It's his first day on the job, actually. Here he comes, head of Audi Motorsport, Rolf Mitchell. Come in the middle here, Rolf. Hello, Molly. Hello, Stefan. <laughs> first day on the job. How are you feeling? Well, with that start, uh, pretty amazing there. Uh, in my former function, of course, I had the contact to the motorsport guys, but uh, I think, yeah, one couldn't start better than uh, having this huge event and, of course, seeing, I think, a really, really nice car. It's so clear that there's just a huge amount of passion that goes into making this project. It was done in record time to get yeah. ready for the first Dakar. You know, what is your background? What is your motorsport passion? Well, the motorsport passion started when I was a, a very little boy. Uh, and in, during my career, I just had the chance to have many interfaces, uh, starting with the Audi Sport TT Cup and, and many other things through my Audi Sport career. But this dimension I saw here is just, uh, yeah, it's another league. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the combination of, of technique, um, also leaving the circuit racing and going into a very unknown sphere uh, was also for me to see that last year. And believe me, I, I saw you both uh, every day <laughs> on my screen. Uh, yeah, it was just amazing. And now being part and being in the middle of that is, is just uh, an honor for me, yeah. How does it sound for you, head of motorsport? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, pretty, pretty yeah curious to be honest because uh, yeah if you're a little boy and, and, and could dream a job you would do it like this and to achieve it is even more yeah i think it's it would take some some days um, until i can believe it but um, working with these amazing people this is the main thing and the title is another thing but um, acting together as a team i think it's more important Let's talk about titles because Sven Quant is here with us today so we have to build up some pressure on him what <laughs> is the target for the next Dakar? Well, believe me, that was also one of my first actions. Long, long <laughs> learning from, from Sven. Of course, this long year experience from the team. Um, I think the target is clear. Um, in the first time we learned in Dakar, 
Uh, and the second time, and this is one of my common goal, of course, we want to achieve a podium and mm. everybody can choose the position on the podium. But um, yeah, it's, it's, we know it's a tough one, mm. but um, we don't go on a track or into the desert uh, with less expectation. So let's keep on pushing. Tell us a bit about the status of the project right now. Well, um, Stefan said it is, of course, it is an intense phase uh, building up all the cars. And I know that Sven and our teams are really doing an amazing job uh, and, and spending a lot of time. Yeah, of course, we live from the learnings, from the expectations uh, for this year. And the learnings from the first season, I think it's, it's the most important one mm -hmm. um, to actively listen to the drivers, to the engineers and also about all the circumstances to really improve the whole system. Mm. And I think, talking about the status, we're quite on track. And if you're gonna see the new generation of the car, it's visible that we have, I think, done a lot of things uh, to be prepared well. Um, so we're on track. We are right before the second test, uh, which will happen in, in Morocco. And then it's the Rally Morocco, and then we are going for the big one. Yeah? So, next part, uh, are you coming to the Dakar? <laughs> That's no question, of course, <laughs> of course, that is, this is my job. No, of course, I, I really, I have a dreamed of uh, uh, being part of that. And uh, Sven and me, of course, are, let me say, the, the, the last two to take decisions. Therefore, um, I try to attend uh, the test in Morocco. I will be at the Rally Morocco, and of course, I will be in Dakar. And will you do the full experience? Will you sleep in a tent? Yeah, they told me I have to to uh, sleep in in a caravan with Matthias Ekstrom, which is <laughs> pretty tough. But yeah, we will we will solve this, uh, and and uh, of course doing the New Year's Eve uh, with with uh, the legends of drivers. So it's it's pretty cool to see to live them experience there uh, when we see about Carlos, mm. Stefan, and Matthias. So of course you have to be part of that team also to contribute your part. Yeah, that's so, why I'm there. So I'm sure you've had a chance to speak with the drivers and co-drivers. You know how. How are their feelings towards this new development of the car? I think they're all amazed of the car and about the working of the concept mm. due to this really electric drivetrain yeah, with the energy converter. So with all the advantages, um, yeah, and of course, everybody is, is really, I think he's really amazed to, to, to take the next step. So mm. we could achieve four podiums uh, mm. uh, and uh, four stage wins and 14 podiums. And I think for, for the next time, everybody wants to do one step more. Uh, and I can see it in their eyes and also if we can exchange ourselves in the test when we're in Saragossa. And so, um, yeah, everybody is engaged and everybody is just focused on this next big step. Mm. We have to talk about the new name, Ask Who Etron E2. Exactly, exactly. E2, you know, when I saw this, I was like, yes, because I'm probably being a bit biased here, but one of the most legendary cars in rallying, of course, the Audi S1 E2, uh, with, you know, Mikola and Blomqvist and Valter behind the wheel. You know, how, how important is it to, to continue this history and to give it a name like that? I think you asked the right one now. Um, I was part of that taking decision because this is exactly, we, we were born in the, in the rally sports and E2 for me is, is just linked with a, let me say, a cult car. And uh, yeah, if you're going to see the next generation, then I think it deserves the name E2. Uh, and this is also uh, coming from a great tradition, mm. but then, of course, developing into the future with the electrification, uh, with some more progress. Mm. And I think this is a perfect combination. And yes, um, E2, I had the same feeling as you. <laughs> Yeah, that one. <laughs> Legendary, iconic. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that chat, Rolf. We will now have a look at the background for giving the new Audi RSQ e-tron the name E2. <laughs> e, as in a stage of evolution or further development. Following the evolutions during the second phase of the development program, the new RSQ e-tron now bears the abbreviation E2 as a tribute to the history of Audi Sport. The legendary Audi Sport Quattro in its final development stage was the most extreme version of the Quattro in Group B rallying during the 1980s and it is still a fan favourite to this day. With the abbreviation being carried forward to the new Audi RSQ e-tron E2, Audi wants to continue this successful tradition.
Audi Sport, of course, steeped in history, and we're getting closer to showing you the brand new Dakar car. It will arrive here shortly, but let's first show you the main changes on the car. The new Audi RSQ e-tron E2. Lighter, more aerodynamic and more efficient than ever before. As you know, our new concept last year was already reliable. We could concentrate for this season on the overall efficiency of the car. So therefore, we reduced the weight of the car. It has a completely new body with significantly better aerodynamics, helping to lower both the weight and the center of gravity of the prototype. The total weight could be reduced to a minimum value of 2,100 kilograms. You can see it directly on the car. The overall surfaces were much reduced. On the front bonnet, it's now a fully integrated aero device with all the ducts and all the openings. So therefore, the part is really lightweight. Additional surfaces on the sides at the rear have all been removed, making it much lighter. The aerodynamic concept under the bonnet is also new. On the side, we reduced a lot the surfaces. The elephant food was reduced completely. This allowed the designers to save further weight and optimize the airflow. The overall aerodynamic drag is thus reduced by around 15%. In terms of top speed, however, nothing has changed. It remains limited to 170 km an hour. Another sticking point, the serviceability of the Audi RSQ e-tron has been made much easier. When they need to change the spare wheel, on this one it's just one pin you need to remove, then they can directly exchange the tyre. The new 10-spoke rims are also significantly more grippy. The Audi RSQ e-tron E2, a further development with the ultimate goal of optimal performance for the greatest possible success. Well, that was all you needed to know about the new E2. And joining me now, Matthias Ekstrom, Carlos Sainz. Have you guys tried the car yet, the new one? Of course, we have been <laughs> testing already. Uh, we have really good uh, first week of testing in Spain, in Zaragoza, like mm -hmm. we used to do last, uh, last year and different years. And it has been really going well. Uh, we are obviously really looking for the, the Morocco test, which is going to be very, very important, very crucial. But mm -hmm. here is the car. Yeah, and here it yeah, comes. It was a really <laughs> posi positive first test. Wow. Matthias, tell us a bit about the changes and how happy you are with the changes. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, from the design you can see by yourself. I think it looks like a Formula One car for the desert now <laughs> with all the new uh, aerodynamic updates. But uh, when it comes to handling, it's mm. easy to feel that uh, the car is lighter. Mm. And also all the details that we wanted to improve have changed. So. <laughs> It's very obvious that we as drivers are very happy, but uh, then of course there's always a downside. We have slightly less power than last year, mm -hmm. but all in all a very big improvement. And uh, as Carlos said, we had a very good test in Zaragoza and we all look forward to the next one in Morocco. So if there was any doubt behind the wheel of the car right now with Stefan Peter Hansel and his co-driver Eduard Bollinger. Carlos, how has this new evolution simplified things for you as a driver? Well, the basic of the car are really similar to last year. We just optimize everything, you know, everything what can be optimized in the reasonable time of uh, time we have. We have tried to achieve it from the engineering side. I think they have really looking for in all the small detail to make the car lighter, to to come closer to the to the weight limit. And regarding the, the driving side, obviously it, it is nicer to drive a lighter car but uh, we learned many many things last year and we try all what we learned every single day from last year the car we try 
What we want to improve, we try to put it in this car together with the with the engineers, with the co-drivers co and everybody to, mm -hmm. to try to improve the car. Matthias, just lastly, you said Formula One car for the desert, so the competition should be pretty worried, yeah? I think if you look on it, I would uh, uh, say so. But uh, again, I think last year uh, we've shown that we are able to go quick on certain stages, but still the Dakar, you have to be humble because you need to do all the stages good if you want to fight for the win. Mm. And uh, that's the ultimate goal for all of us. And uh, yeah, I'm still super excited to be here and uh, also to be again <laughs> having the same uh, teammates with Stefan and uh, Carlos. Because for me, it's like a dream come true to have those legends as teammates to learn from the best in the sport. And uh, I just enjoy the moment. Definitely. Thank you to the two of you. Best of luck with all the races coming up. And let's have a chat with Stefan. You look pretty happy and comfortable in there. <laughs> yes, it's, you know, it's really, really fun also to drive, uh, always to drive the, the new car. Uh, we did some good tests uh, mm. last month in, in Spain, and uh, yeah, I need to say that we, we take a lot of pleasure to arrive. It's uh, again a new step, and the uh, best feeling than last year again, and uh, also fast. Tell us what, what parts of the car, what parts of the driving are different from the previous car? I, I have the feeling that the car is more free, I don't know why, probably due to the aer aerodynamic, you know. Mm. When to get the top speed, it's look more easy, but it's also can be also with the weight because we, we have a car a little bit lighter than last year. And, uh, but for sure, we, we keep exactly the same concept. So the, the power train, the electric power mm. train is exactly the same. So, and it's really good because we, we saw last year that it was really a good concept. But yes, I feel, I feel the car really more free, more light. Oh, more free, that yeah, sounds yeah. good. Are there any changes for you and Edu inside the car? No, it's just a small thing to adjust uh, the position, but also all, also the dashboard. Uh, all the buttons are really in the good position and uh, we have uh, good air condition also mm -hmm. inside, so it's really comfortable, uh, especially during the race like, uh, like we did in Abu Dhabi, for example, mm -hmm. but also during the Dakar. Some days will be really hot, so mm -hmm. good air condition and the uh, position because, you know, we stay around the between six to 10 hours inside the cockpit every day. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to work on our position. It's mm -hmm. really important also. Now, huge amounts of data have been collected at the two rallies that you've done this year. How intense has that work been and how close has that relationship been from the two of you reporting back to the engineers and making these changes? You, you know, the, since the beginning, it was really um, a good, uh, it's a good knowledge from everybody, but uh, to work together now since more than one year, it's more, more free, more relaxed, and we understand a little bit more how to work together. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, it's at the end this year, it was not the same job la than last year. Last year, it was really the beginning. And now we work more on the small detail, mm. uh, just for the performance, for sure. But uh, yeah, and also with Edouard, it's really good to spend the time together because we are, uh, 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 we are, um, we are two together uh, s only since two years. Yeah. It's really new to be to be uh, together. So all the time that we spend together, it's really good. Thank you very much, Thank Stefan. You. Best of luck with everything. Uh, we're going to now have a proper walk around the car with Benedict Brunniger, who is technical project leader with Audi Sport. He'll be chatting with Stefan. Benny, let's talk a little bit about the brand new car. Uh, we reduced the weight of the car. Uh, what was the target and what did you achieve? Uh, in the end, um, the main development target was, as we said, to reduce the weight of the car and also to, uh, to improve the um, air um, performance at all. Then we also were focusing on the handling for the driver and also on the energy consumption of the car. So in, in weight, uh, you can see it's directly on the car. We reduce the surfaces a lot. So every double surfaces uh, are gone and all the surfaces which are now on the car still, so like you see it on the, on the front bonnet, they are now implemented directly in the aerodynamic. So you have, you have the surface which are guiding the, the air around the, the parts and we reduce also on the side 
here the elephant food. Yeah, we have to explain what the elephant food. We always talking about the elephant food, but most of the people didn't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a big part here in front, which is now reduced. We um, we have here just a mud flap holder. Now at the end, um, also on the rear. So when we go back, all the double surfaces from the rear bonnet and the fin was gone, um, just to have really focus on on the weight reduction. How many kilos do we lost here in the back, for example? I think this is my, my favorite view on the car, the backside. This is so beautiful. It looks so uh, futuristic and uh, future as an attitude is the right claim for this car, I think. <laughs> I cannot tell you the, the, the exact number, but in the end, on the rear, we lost the most, but overall it was around about 80 kilo. 80 kilo in total. Yeah. That's interesting to hear. That's a lot. And uh, what's happened inside the car for the driver's co-driver especially? Yeah, on the outside, you can see it directly here on the spare wheel door. So in the past, we had four um, safety hatches to, uh, to unlock. Um, now we have only one in the middle. So they are, they connect directly to the, they are connected directly to the, to the spare wheel. Um, inside the car also, like uh, Stefan explained, um, there are a lot of changes in the interfaces of, of the, uh, of the car so that the drivers are able to to use them as good as possible as a technician who works every day with the car what's your favorite part of the car what do you like most uh, the front bonnet <laughs> why because now it looks like we always say in the development it looks more like the race version of the last year car so we really have now it looks like a lmp car made for the desert uh, during the last Dakar, we always lost a little bit of time concerning the tire change uh, procedure and you have changed a lot of things. Uh, how many time can we achieve? Oh, this we need to proper test, uh, but the first test we did in, uh, in the last test uh, with the driver without any training, it was much better than the best time last year. So Molly, it's up to you to explain what we have to do with tire changing and all the things. <laughs> Thank you very much, Benedict. We're now going to talk a bit about the importance of tyre changes uh, at the Dakar and, of course, uh, other off-road rallies. And to do so, we're going to bring in Emil Bergqvist, who's going to come rolling in with one of the wheels. And this, I believe, Benedict, is the new rim, right, for the this car? Is, yeah, correct. This is the new race rim. And if, uh, yeah, we'll bring in a microphone for Emil. You can see directly the, the bigger openings, yep. so yep. to be easy to, to grab them. And you have first-hand experience, Emil. Uh, how heavy is this? I think it's around 40 kilos, so it's uh, quite heavy, I would say. <laughs> and talk us through the process of a wheel change. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's really important to uh, you play together good with the, with the driver or the co-driver. Uh, we have a hydraulic jacks on this car, so it's uh, helping uh, to lift the car really easy. Uh, then we have to uh, to remove the, the cover, the carbon cover. And mm -hmm. on this car, it's much more easy. So. Uh, then you just have to, to do it as fast as you can with the uh, electric nut gun and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge and mm. um, you have to be able to do it uh, around two minutes. And how good are the changes on the E2? It's really good so far, so we hope to keep it like this on the Dakar. Tell us about those changes though, what, what is it that makes your life easier? No, I mean, uh, it's like uh, for sure when you have the hydraulic jacks and, and uh, all these uh, things. Uh, we also did some more uh, improvements on the, on the wheel hubs uh, to, to be able to fit the tire on the car more easy. So uh, we have worked together really good, I think. So I, I hope it will show next year. And you're excited about the upcoming events? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Now, Stefan, you're going to have a competition, I think. Yes, hmm? I think we will make a competition. That means Edu is coming to us. Edu <laughs> will do the first job. And uh, Lucas, please come to me and explain what they are doing. I need a co-commentator. And this is a perfect job bec because you are the oldest co-driver. Come with me, please. Problems by opening the door, Edu? So. So this is live. We have to wait until the moment the car started and then we can push it up. Edu, perhaps you can just explain what it is you're doing first of all. Just the initial, initial because the car was shutting down. So now I just uh, put the car on just for the noise, for the microphone was better to put it off. So, 
just a moment, just a moment, I have to stop the time. We want to do it in the proper way. I should have a driver with me. No, no, you don't need it. Okay. <laughs> we actually have one here. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Okay. You need to tell us when to start the time. Are you ready, guys? We did no training at all. Eh? No, 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 no problem. No. We want to see it. And then we will check it once again during the Dakar. Okay, ready? Steady, go! So what are they doing, Look, <laughs> Need to put the dust and more temperature in the tire. Now the first thing is they jack down and uh, the co-driver removed the skews. But now it's, uh, the surface is it's clean, but in the, in the Dakar it's normally the gravel and you need to uh, be careful with, with all the, the parts and nuts and and the and the fix the the, the old tire inside because now the the tire have a pressure but when you puncture you are out of the pressure and you need to tie it uh, uh, proper with the straps because it's very easy to to lose the the tire in the in the middle of the stage we heard about the 40 kilos weight of the tire uh, rim combination did you make some special program to fix it no, most of the said is to put in the place. It's the most most complicated. And now the jack is too high. You need to to calculate a little bit the minimum distance to the tire to the to the ground. So what's the time? I have to fix the blade and the tire. And when they finished, but it's only just over one minute, 17 seconds now. No. Under pressure. <laughs> this is where they lost the time. They make a mistake. Have to open the one again. <laughs> so this is something we have to learn up to the next Dakar, right? Yeah, this is the this is the first prototype to to fix the tire, and you need to improve of this system because it's not so easy to to fix the the tire, and uh, and now. Now with the with the cover, it's only one pin to fix. This is a little bit complicated. Stefan, you lost a minute by fixing the side plate. Did you know that? He have a good gap now. He have a good gap with the other car. It's a small detail. Question of small detail. Okay, ready. Two minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> Two minutes, 14. <laughs> no, but we, we need to do already more training because at the end, the car was not completely ready due to the mechanics, not you. <laughs> uh, of course, not, not because of you two, no. <laughs> no, no, but we need to do a training, but the system is for sure is okay now. And we just need to do two, four, ten times maybe, and we will be ready. For sure. How much easier is this new system? Uh, it's... Uh, I don't know, but last year at the end, we, at the end, the, the 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 key is never stopped for the puncture. You know, mm -hmm. this is the best the best thing that we can do. Less puncture as possible, and if we have a puncture, for sure, uh, we need to uh, uh, to lose less time as possible also. And with a new system, probably uh, under two minutes, it will be okay. That's very impressive. Are we, are we, have we got another contestant for this yes, competition? Of course. Yeah. He's waiting. He's waiting. <laughs> Did you see him? And where's Matthias? <laughs> Matthias must help him. I'm, I'm sure this is coming as a bit of a surprise and for Carlos them. And Carlos is still <laughs> smiling because he's happy that Lucas is a co-commentator and he doesn't have to work today. <laughs> so. So. Matthias is watching. <laughs> He's picked up some tips, I think, watching yeah, yeah. Uh, Stefan and Edu. It's, it's not fixed already <laughs> yet. Okay. So is it ready to go again or? Yeah? Should Damien, the pin go back in maybe? Are you ready? And the car should be turned off or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> no? You don't want to do that? No. No? Doesn't want to get his clothes okay. dirty, okay. I don't think. <laughs> then we stop the challenge over here. <laughs> but the point being, it's quicker to change a wheel now on the new Evolution. Yeah, definitely. Mm.
Well, very impressive to see the brand new car. You know, so much work has gone into this and we're going to see the car in action in not very long. Why don't you tell us, Stefan, what's coming up next? Well, next is the test in Morocco. And two weeks later, we stay once again in Morocco for the Rally de Morocco. And uh, it will be very interesting how everything works in under rally conditions. So it's completely different to do something here in Neuburg and to do it in the desert. And all three crews will be taking part in all of this, yes, yeah? Yes, hopefully. And they're all totally focused, I think. <laughs> Take a look in Carlos' eyes. He can't wait to drive the car in the rally. I'm sure for that. Did you? <laughs> Absolutely. Really looking for Morocco. You know, it's a long time since see, since we don't race. We obviously test. We obviously work in the car and we are really looking forward to, to prepare the, the car the best possible way. And mm. Morocco is the, the best way to, to arrive to the car well prepared. Mm. This is uh, where we need to find out where we are, to fine tune the last small detail, to see if it is small thing that uh, we need to, to improve. So. Mm. It's a very important event for us and all the, all the three cars will be there, the whole team, and it's uh, our, our final test, which is crucial. Carlos is like a racehorse. <laughs> he always wants to go on the track. <laughs> and if everyone can remember the Dakar last year, the first time with this car, the incredible success that you all had, you know, with the stage wins, it was four of them, many podiums as well, and Matthias also finishing ninth uh, overall. So. It's exciting to think what can happen at the next one with this new evolution of car. So uh, I think we say that that's uh, it from the launch of the brand new car. We will be back with more Inside Dakar from the test and of course Rally Morocco. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.